How's it going, everybody? So in this video, I bring to you an amazingly positive update on Rhodiola rosea, okay? So if you've been following me over the years, you've probably seen multiple different videos of me talking about Rhodiola. Um, I've made videos where I was talking about how Rhodiola is amazing, it's very beneficial for stress, etc., and I've made videos where I'm like, man, rhodiola puts puts me to sleep, and many other people get tired when they take rhodiola. Uh, it can possibly increase feelings of lethargy, brain fog, and possibly depression. Um, you know. So basically, I've been back and forth with with rhodiola, but I think now I have so much experience. Uh, with clients as well as my my own experience and after uh, taking another deep dive into the research and cross-referencing that with my experiences and other people's experiences anecdotally in the community as well I think I figured out what's actually going on here okay so um, here's the thing Okay, so rhodiola rosea is actually a very amazing herb. And that was actually one of the more recent videos I made on rhodiola, where I was like, rhodiola is actually really amazing. I was wrong, right? So here's the thing. Uh, there is, a, there is a, um, a bell curve with dose on rhodiola. So basically, there's a very short range where rhodiola acts as a very powerful kind of like energizing yet calming and uh, brain boosting compound anywhere from around 150 milligrams to around 600 milligrams give or take is the range where rhodiola is most effective for all of its uh, most credited and claimed effects okay you know Commonly, rhodiola is claimed to be, um, you know, an energy boosting, fatigue relieving. Uh, Mike Dougal from a Nootropics Reviewer calls it a nap and a pill. Um, it basically removes fatigue and just makes you feel really, really good. Uh, for me, <laughs> with the right dose, rhodiola makes me feel inspired. It makes me feel. Uh, like easily interested in things like easily uh, like it makes me feel more more pleasure and enjoyment from doing activities and uh, it basically takes away the scatterbrain because um, for me my mind is always going a million thoughts per, per minute and also my mind is very dynamic I don't know what is up with my brain but basically uh, I can have five different trains of thought going all at the same time. Like my mind is multi-layered. I have like layer one where I'm thinking about nutrition science. Layer two where I'm like, oh shit, what's what's going on in the room? Layer three, what is my history teacher talking about in this lecture? And layer four, uh, oh shoot, I hope my mom's doing okay. Maybe I should text her. And and then layer five is like, uh, uh, what am I going to do at uh, jujitsu practice later? Later, and so all at the same time, I'm thinking not not just thinking surface level, but very deeply about five different things, all at the same time, like legit, legit, all at the same time, like almost. Anyway, point is, when I take rhodiola, that I'm able to concentrate all of that mental energy that's usually scattered and all these other things into one thing at a time. Uh, where I'm fully present with what I'm doing and I feel really, really good about it. Like I feel really, really good about that one thing I'm doing, right? Um, so if you've ever like tried reading a book and you start reading a book and you just are not interested and you, and you're, you really have a strong urge to do something else, you know, or like it, maybe you just always feel like doing something else and not doing that one thing that you're supposed to be doing right now. That feeling goes away. With rhodiola, it makes you really be able to engage with one thing at a time and feel pleasure from doing so. It is the ultimate ADHD um, relieving substance that works for the majority of people the majority of the time. 
uh, it is the ultimate antidepressant herb. It is the ultimate anxiety relieving herb. But its main thing is like mood boosting, focus enhancing, and then uh, stress relieving. But it's not a stress relieving herb in the way that ashwagandha is, where that's not its main focus, right? But you will just, you'll, it's not like you won't feel this overwhelming feeling of calmness. You will just feel like you're not anxious anymore and you're not tired anymore, which is fantastic. So anyway, that's when you have the dosage proper. But the issue is if you take too much rhodiola, okay, uh, even 500 milligrams at one time can be too much for some people, okay? And the, do and, and the longer you take rhodiola, the less and less you need to take is what I found. Uh, at first, you might be able to tolerate higher doses, but as the longer you take it, the more it builds up in the system, it seems. And you start to notice the, the regular dose that you normally take is causing the same negative effects that taking too much at one time would cause otherwise. Okay, and this is actually the, the key here because for me, I was doing really good from like October all the way into February. So a good um, give five months, give or take, of taking rhodiola. But that last month, the, on the fifth month, I started feeling tired, exhausted, lethargic, and at the same time, restless. Like I couldn't sleep, but I felt like I, I needed to or I wanted to. And I was like, what is the problem here? Is it the Rishi? Is it this? Is it that? Am I missing something that I was taking before and I took out of my stack? And then I noticed it, the rhodiola was kind of like, it seemed to be the rhodiola. So I removed the rhodiola and I felt better. But I didn't feel that awesome, uplifting, mood-boosting effect I was feeling before. So I was still like, I don't even know if it's a rhodiola because I still don't feel like I was feeling before. And so what I figured out now is, what happened was the rhodiola built up in my system and I was taking too much at that point in time uh, where the 500 milligram twice a day dose that I was taking is too much now. And so it was causing like it was causing all the tiredness and lethargy and stuff. But the thing is removing the rhodiola altogether. Now I don't have the beneficial effects of the right dose of rhodiola. Okay. So, so now um, what I realize is if you if that happens to you, take a smaller dose, okay? Uh, and we're going to get into the different types of rhodiola, the different like kind of forms and brands you can take here in a second. Um, but a lot of people are going to be best served by taking a loose powder rhodiola because you can dose the rhodiola exactly how much you need. And the thing is, it tastes really like bitter and has a really odd taste, but just get used to it. As long as you mix it in some coffee or something or whatever you drink and don't just take a dose on an empty stomach, which I've done before with no water, that made me vomit. That was pretty bad. Uh, you should be okay because it has strong astringent uh, properties in the stomach. Um, for a lot of people... Uh, if rhodiola either like, so I've seen anecdotal reports where people say rhodiola doesn't work for them and they're taking these massive doses, like 3000 milligrams. And they're like, bro, it doesn't work. What the hell? This shit's bunk. It's a placebo. And I, I hate when people are so cognitively lazy that they're like, oh, it didn't work. Therefore it's placebo. Like, and they didn't actually read like the scientific literature on it. So it's like you're trying to be scientific and stuck up, you know, elitist, but be like, oh, it's placebo. It doesn't work. And it's like you haven't even read the scientific literature, you know, and placebo is like a scientific term. So <laughs> it's just so ignorant. Uh, the reality is it's not working. And the more you're taking, the less it's going to work because the studies show lower doses are generally more effective. If you take 200, if you take 500 milligrams, it's making you feel bad. Try 250 milligrams for a couple days. Some people are going to be best served by a hundred milligrams or so. You'll find a lot of uh, combination compounds only have like nine, like 50 to 90 milligrams, like certain uh, stress relieving uh, combination 
things, you know, like stress relief formulas and things have lower doses. And that might be why, because you don't need a lot, a lot of the time. Uh, and some rhodiola standalone products uh, dose it in like 120 milligram incre increments, where if you take two, you get the normal 240, 250 milligram dose. So um, I think it's very important with rhodiola to start low and uh, remember that less is usually more in this case, like legit, legit. Uh, and you'll see people on Reddit forums and stuff like that who generally follow a similar pattern. Like they might take 500 milligrams in the morning, then 250 in, in the evening or something. Uh, and so for me, there at first, that's what I was doing. 500 in the morning, 250 at night or something like that, you know, in the evening. Um, and then I took 500 and 500 and the more I, after I, 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 I up my dose of 500 and 500, that was when the problems happened. And there was a point in time where I really wanted to get to the bottom of it. So it's like, let's really see what rhodiola does to my body. So I literally took like a thousand milligrams at once and I started to feel a thought like really bad. I was like, uh, I'll try another thousand milligrams. And I highly recommend that you never dose rhodiola that high. Uh, first, like the more I took, the the less energetic I felt and the more just like I just felt like like swamp, like a swamp water. Like I just need I just felt I don't even know how to explain how I felt just so lethargic beyond words, so lethargic that I didn't I, like, I didn't want to lay down. I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to exist. It was really bad. Uh, never take to never take that much, but when I just say, I just took 250 milligrams, uh, this morning, um, at like 5 AM cause I woke up and I was like, Oh, I'm feeling weird. And I just had the inspiration to do so. And, uh, so 250 milligrams this morning at 5 AM and I went back to sleep and I felt great. I had a great sleep and I woke up feeling pretty good. So I took another 250 milligrams about five hours later. And, um, and I felt really, really, I feel really good now. Like it was like an hour or two ago. I feel really freaking good. And it was weird. Cause like I took the, the rhodiola and I was like, I was like, man, uh, like after about 20 minutes, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Like I was like, this is a little bit too hard to believe. And I started to notice all of the feelings that I've been looking for. Like the last two months, I'm like, man, like, why do I not feel like myself? Like I was feeling, I was feeling so motivated. I was feeling so happy about life, so easily amused, so nonchalant and just like bulletproof. What's going on? And then like I took the rhodiola an hour, like an hour ago. And after it, it kind of took effect, I'm like, man, I'm feeling that feeling again. I'm like, well, this is what I was looking for. It kind of restores the kind of like um, the health, the feelings of health and the feelings of vitality of a child. Now, mind you, I think because I'm also taking a little bit of cordyceps, uh, Hyperion herbs, 10 to one extract, only the highest quality, and they actually have synergistic effects together. Um, but the rhodiola itself is what is no, like causing this effect. So anyway, um, the reason why rhodiola does this is so in and so basically what its studied mechanism of action actually is is that it's supposed to um, increase the expression of um, neuroepinephrine which is mostly associated with focus and and motivation and kind of like drive seeking out survival things and whatnot I think that's its main mechanism increases your focus and increases your drive and it gives you and neuroepinephrine is also released in response to long-term fasting to help you kind of seek out food is the hy hypothesis and that's generally like i get a similar feeling from taking rhodiola that i would normally feel if i was fasting for like 22 hours and training at the same time uh and if you take rhodiola and you fast you'll feel like pretty badass right Rhodiola also seems to help stimulate uh, the release of beta endorphins, which are associated with that feeling of pleasure and enjoyment and euphoria after exercise. 
And I found, and I think this is why, so people who have anhedonia or andohenia, that feeling of like complete lack of pleasure in life that's associated with depression and anxiety, that I suffered from from years, they'll probably notice when you take like a, an effective dose of rhodiola that those feelings completely go away, specifically because it increases the stimulation of beta endorphin. And I do think a lot of people in that space fixate on their symptoms so much that they will know SIBO themselves into never getting better, because that was my case as well. Even if they take something that might be working, they may not notice it because they're fixating on their andohenia so extensively. Um, however, I've definitely felt the, the opposite of andohenia when I take rhodiola. And I've been experimenting with all different herbs to try to recapture that feeling I was feeling before. And it's funny, well, I'm not going to get too deep into this, but I took two completely different combo stacks, one completely different one in December, where it was a focus on reishi, cordyceps, and rhodiola, and then one in January where it was cordyceps, rhodiola, polyrhachis black ant, nettle root, and um, pine pollen. And I thought, it like, oh, this pine pollen is really another level thing. But now I'm like, wait, maybe it was the rhodiola and maybe combined with those things. But both times I, sat, I did those stacks, I felt amazing, this great feeling and zest for life. But it was, it was a little bit different. Well, the second stack with the pine pollen and stuff was more aggressive. The first one was more calm, spiritual, and grounding. Uh, anyway, rhodiola, I think, is a very powerful, like, brain-boosting type of thing. So another mechanism of action is... Um, so you have a specific serotonin receptor, uh, 5-HT. Now, I don't know uh, exact. I think it's 5-HT1 receptor, uh, but I don't quote me on that one. And that's a serotonin receptor. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about serotonin and, like, it increases lethargy or depression. And it's like, it's a very complex thing, and it depends on the other receptors and other things going on in your neurology so, or your neurochemistry. So... Um, I wouldn't fixate too much on the serotonin, you know, effects of rhodiola because it also has been shown to increase the recycling of dopamine over the long term. Uh, and I think it seems to, it, it has like a direct effect on um, dopamine receptor density and the sensitization of dopamine receptors. So... In the short term, there are some uh, effects on norepinephrine and uh, 5-HT1 receptor. But over the long term, um, there seems to be a regulation, like a healthy regulation of dopamine receptors in general. And, and you got to remember, if you take too much of rhodiola, it can have some like crazy effects in the short term. And it's not a good idea to kind of like overdo it on things like that. And rhodiol is a very, like, powerful substance in kind of like the uh, a similar fashion to pharmaceuticals. And uh, there are studies that actually directly compare it to pharmaceutical drugs. And it's often used kind of either as adjunct uh, therapies with pharmaceuticals or a lot of people will either compare it to things like, well, I don't want to say what they compare it to because I don't think it's accurate. They'll compare it to ADHD medication a lot of times, uh, but a lot of people will literally claim that they just completely get off their medications altogether because rhodiola is that good. So, um, and I would definitely say, hey, when you got the dose proper, then yes. But with that in mind, that's also why dose is vitally important. There's too much nonsense going around there where people are like, oh, you can't overdo it on, on herbs. They're natural, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, you very well can, and you better fucking not, okay? <laughs> like, look at all the people who are going crazy about ashwagandha, especially KSM-66, even going so far as to say using ashwagandha long-term, some people are, like, saying there's extreme negative side effects that are, are permanent that last even months later, which I think is nonsense, but still... You got to be very careful just because it's an herb or it's natural or whatever you want to say. It's powerful as fuck. There's a reason why it's a multi-million dollar industry on top of the fact that there's a lot of charlatans out there and people generally lack knowledge. Uh, anyway, 
So let's get into the types of rhodiola. Uh, so this is the one that I took today and that I've had the most success with. It's the Nature's Way rhodiola. I don't know if you could see that. I hope you can. Um, and it is, you know, most of these, the most rhodiolas is rhodiola rosea. There's also cantulata. I did a video on that one. And there's like a wild Tibetan rhodiola as well. So rhodiola rosea, um, standardized to 3% rosavins and 1% sal salidiceride. Sal salidroside. So uh, this is a common extract, and this is the one that most of the research been, has been done on. Okay, this is the high rosavin and lower salidroside. So it's 3% rosavin, 1% salidroside. Uh, this is the one that you want if you, if you really want to experience the effects everyone talks about. This is the one that most people take. Uh, just be sure that you get a brand that everyone else says works. Because you got to be careful. Different brands have some weird variants. The, this one, ha, uh, it, it has, uh, it, each capsule is 250 milligrams. So I like this one if you have, to, if you insist on getting capsules, okay? So then we have uh, Rhodiola Rosea powder. So this is like a whole, this is a, the extract powder. Um, and it's by NutriCost. I use this for a couple months actually. And, and each scoop is 250 milligrams. This one contains 400 servings per container. That's a lot. And this is only like $20 or so. So, uh, this one again, three, uh, 3% 3 rosavins, 1% salidrosides. Uh, I think this is the best one to take, but you got to remember this shit is a very overwhelming taste that a lot of people won't be able to tolerate. Never take the powder on an empty stomach. Always take it with a lot of water or some coffee because it has strong estrogen properties that can make you throw up if you take it without in, like a lot of water. Anyway, um, so I think this is best because it's a loose powder and you can... If 250 milligrams is too much for you, you can lower it down to 100 milligrams. Finding the right dose is very important because, again, studies show after 600 milligrams, the effects e uh, either start to diminish or they start to have uh, the opposite effect where you feel the opposite of what an effect dose feels like. You'll start to feel lethargic except in, and tired and everything else. So then, of course, you have um, tinctures. So this is a herb farm uh, alcohol extract, so ethanol. And I don't like non-alcoholic liquid extracts. It doesn't make sense with gl glycerin. If you're going to take a, a liquid extract, take an ethanol extract. Um, it's going to be way more potent, in my opinion. Um, so this is uh, 685 milligrams. Um, Rhodiola of rhodiola root um, liquid in the liquid per seven zero point seven mil, millimoles or milliliters, um, but the extraction rate is one hundred and forty milligrams per dose. So what that means is, at least my interpretation. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, per zero point seven milliliters, you're getting six hundred six hundred and eighty five milligrams of the extract. But the actual, like, absolute amount of herb that you're getting is 140 milligrams, okay? So this is a little bit confusing because 140 milligrams of, an, of, a, of the herb in an ethanolic extract is not the equivalent of a powdered extract, okay? Because a powdered extract is actually standardized. Whereas this is basically a concentrated whole herb, okay? And the dosing, it says one full, one full dropper full, uh, three to four times per day. So that's a lot higher of a frequency and a volume of a dose that you would take with a liquid tincture compared to the powder where you'd only take like one 250 milligram dose maybe in the morning and one in the evening. That one is kind of like a double serving size, provided you only have 140 milligrams per dropper full. So kind of actually is a similar dosage. Um, 
but the ethanolic extract is going to have completely it should have a it's a completely different uh, extraction and it probably has a completely different effect on the body uh, I've used herb farm they used to have I, I think they they don't think they make it anymore they used to have a full spectrum whole herb concentrate uh, powder in capsules and my er some of my earlier rhodiola videos were actually using that specific extract I think I think um, that rhodiola is is good, but it's very powerful. And I think even one capsule provides you like 2,400 milligrams of, of whole herb. That's a pretty powerful extract. So, um, yeah. Then, of course, you have Now Foods. This is literally just the standard... Uh, 3% rosavin, 1% celadrocide, rhodiola extract. But the thing about the Now Foods brand is one capsule provides you 500 milligrams. And so like we've been saying this whole video, the whole point is there's a dose-dependent uh, re relationship. And so if you take 500 milligrams in one capsule... That already might be too much. Most people do best with like 250 milligrams. And I've seen, and for me, when I switched to this one, I did notice right away feeling tired and lethargic. I don't know if it's the brand, because I have always loved Now Foods, but sometimes brands' qualities go down over time, especially because this is way more known about now. It's one of the main ones you'll find in grocery stores. And I've been using Now Foods, all kinds of, even their whole herb capsules work well if you make teas out of them. And they've generally tasted like the herb is supposed to taste. I mean, this tastes like rhodiola, so. But I just think that there's too much per capsule. So you might, if you get this one, you might want to open up the capsule and sprinkle like a quarter to a half of the capsule into coffee and take it that way. You don't want to take the whole capsule right at once unless 500 milligrams is a dose that works best for you. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there at that. Um, I mean, like really, I feel amazing. I just did a whole 30-minute video on rhodiola, and this whole video I felt, I felt tuned in, focused, and um, good. Like I'm gaining energy from creating this video. But the whole, like, two months where I didn't have rhodiola, especially when I'm drinking coffee, like, you know how coffee will give you those jitters? When I take rhodiola with coffee, I don't feel jitters. I just feel euphoria. I feel motivation, and I feel positive, okay? But making videos and doing homework and uh, doing anything, even playing video games, was a real struggle, uh, <laughs> as weird as that might sound. And I think... And, and provided certain herbs that I generally would take will kind of increase that. And you got and there's a lot of other things too. But like uh, when I take rhodiola, I'm able to really like zone in. Like I feel fucking great. Um, like relatively speaking, okay. So and and I didn't even mention the athletic boosting qualities of rhodiola. I'll make another video about what I think the most standard athletic boosting stack really should be. And one more thing I'll say on all of this is like, so I appreciate everyone's co comments. I've been getting a lot of feedback the last like couple months where people come on cause, and they tell me that, my, that they love my channel because I'm like authentic as fuck. I sit down and I just give an entire lecture about the ins and outs of every subject. And people say I'm really good at synthesizing information that normally you'd have to gather from multiple experts. Uh, and I appreciate that because I feel very confidently that that is actually how I feel about my work too. And um, I think a major reason why that's the case is like recently I stopped trying really hard to make short videos or to, to cater to other people and what they think about my content. And I've just kind of let my mind go. <laughs> Within the confines of like 
making a video that makes sense and is logically following a timeline per se, uh, staying relevant to the topic. So anyway, uh, love you guys. Have a good one. Let me know what your experience is at Rodeola or if you're planning on trying it now after watching this video and I'll talk to you all next time.